Okay, so in making a necklace swag, the first thing we do, we're going to cut a square of fabric out. You want this square to be 46 inches wide by 31 inches long. That's going to be your first thing you have to do. After you do that, you're going to take your fabric and you're going to fold it in half. I'm going to turn it around this way. Okay, so now we have our piece of fabric folded in half like this. You're going to take your ruler and you're going to come up eight and a half inches from the bottom, whichever is your bottom of your fabric. I'm using this as my bottom. And you're going to come up eight and a half inches. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a little half, like almost like a half circle. Anything like that. All right, so that's what you want that to look like. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not even gonna really see this when it's done. But basically just a soft curve around. Once you have that, you can go ahead and cut it. Okay. Now from the top of this, being folded in half, you need it to be 15 and 3 quarter inches. And you're going to put a mark at 15 and 3 quarters. And then from here, you're going to bring it down to this point. Right to where that curve meets. That's what's going to give you the angle for your swag. Okay, so that's what that looks like. The angle right on the swag. Now we're going to trim that off. From there, we're going to come six inches down. Now we have to kind of scoop out the, um, the, the necklace swag right in the center. So we're going to come down six inches. Of course, we have this folded in half, so it's six inches down from the top. Now we're going to kind of do the same thing we did to the bottom. We're going to make another corner, another um, curve starting in this corner. Right in this corner right here, right there, and we're going to softly make a curve right, right there. All right, so there's your curve. And you go ahead and you're going to cut that out. Now we're going to unfold it, and that's what you have so far. Now from this point, this is your pattern. Now you can put it onto your fabric, and if you have some type of motif or something that you want to center on it, um, go right ahead. I always, if you're enjoy dealing with the print, um, make sure you're getting, you know, you're, you're cutting each one of them at the same same motif or the same pattern and um, make sure that this is your center point right here with it. This is your pattern for now. Um, now I now at this point I've already cut out my my swag pattern and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add lining to it. So I grab a piece of lining Now a little note on this, 
you do not have to line this. It's easier if you do, because then you don't have to deal with uh, putting a little hem around it. But this can get very thick. So for those of you who have a serger, I would recommend that you serge all the way around it, all the sides, and then just bend in a half inch and sew it. So all you really need to do is to come in and bend it down and stitch it down a half inch all the way around it. Because as you pleat this, it can get thick. But if you're going to use a lining, use a very thin lining. That's what this is, super thin lining right here is a polyester lining. So, uh, because it can get quite thick where you're going to be pleating it. So then you're gonna put this on, if this is your right side of it, you're gonna put it on like so. I actually have my fabric. This is what I'm using. This is what I actually made my original pattern for with. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then what you wanna do is you wanna pin it all in. So all the way around it and leave an opening so you can pull it through. So that opening can be anywhere. Um, it can be in here or in here. It can be at the top if you want. The only place I wouldn't recommend it would be at the bottom. So go ahead and pin this all in and then once you pin it all in you're going to cut it all out and we're going to go from there. Okay so I went ahead I sewed all the way around it. I did leave an opening right here. It's about an 8 inch spot so I could pull my fabric back through. After I pulled it through I did, I don't know if you can see this, probably not here but maybe on the top here. I did do a little stipping because I do use a half inch. So I don't know if you can see right through where these little V's are because I snipped before I turned the fabric. Unfortunately, it didn't record. I tried to record it. It just didn't, rec <laughs> for some reason, didn't record. And so I didn't get it on film. But anyway, I snipped it around here and I snipped a little bit around before I pulled it through. That helps ease this little corner. Um, so I did that. I sewed it a half inch all the way around. The last thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to top stitch this closed and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pleat it and so far that's what this looks like and then we're going to go to the pleating phase okay now we're ready to do our pleating so we're going to start here in the top and we're going to take a pin and we're going to put a pin three and a quarter inches from the point down and then we're going to go every four and a half inches And I should end up with another three and a quarter inches. So the idea is whatever you start with here, you want to finish right here. If it's three inches, um, three inches here, uh, the spacing of four and a half inches, if it was four and a quarter, it wouldn't matter. If it was four and three quarters, probably wouldn't matter either. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to go three and a quarter. and four and a half inches. Typically, when we do this, we would be doing it right at the sewing machine. So we can Sew it right there. And there's a couple of things. You can hand sew these pleats in. You can tack them um, if you like. It all depends on your machine and how much it'll go through. And that's why you may decide to use to do these online. Okay. Next part about this uh, is we're going to keep 
we're going to keep these here. Let's see here. Let's, how can I explain this? Okay, let's see here. We're going to take each pin and put each pin on top of each other. And we're going to keep these all in line. So each pin goes on top of each other. Hopefully you can see that. This is where it gets very thick. So again, making it online might be a better idea, or tacking these. And you can also try using less pleats. Okay, now if you can see, all my pins are lined up, and this is all lined up here. Now what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to take a clamp. I'm going to clamp them. Keep them in place. I'm going to go to my other side. I'm going to do the same thing here. Each of these has to stay in a row. As I say, it's a little awkward doing this way because normally I'd be sewing it I'd be right at the sewing machine. Keeping all your pins together. Then trying to keep these all lined up. At this point it is very thick so if you have the option to tack them hand tack them hand tack them so we're going to go ahead and we're going to tack that down and then we'll form the rest of our pleats okay so this is what it looks like after you're done um and what you get it's going to kind of look like this kind of all messed up and what you're going to have to do is play with these pleats and organize each one of them by coming here and then playing with them. Once you have them semi-formed, then you fold your whole thing in half and make sure your lining and everything is in there, like so. Now, I did sew this, um, but it's very thick. So my recommendation, again, would be to have it unlined so you're not dealing with all this thickness. And also, if this is a customer's, I wouldn't be straight stitching this clothes, which I did. Um, you're better off hand tacking it. A um, couple, two hand tacks through here. And you're leaving this portion of it open right in here. Because that's the next thing we're going to talk about is putting the pins in. Because this is held in with drapery pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around to the back. I'm going to pick the middle, the uh, middle pleat, or closest to the middle pleat as I can. I'm sticking a drapery pin straight through just like that hopefully you can see that all right you probably can anyway and that's because this is going to be held in with two rings or um however you want to do it most likely it's going to be two rings and you got to make sure you're down there far enough so now we're going to go hang it and take a look at what it looks like Okay, so here's the end result here. We've got, the, and I apologize, I decided to put this trim on, I tried to jazz it up a little bit, to just, I just happened to have it. It's not a perfect match, but I thought I'd throw it on there just so you can see what kind of impact a little 
bit of trim does. Um, these are just the fabrics that I had in the house, so it's not a customer's. I just wanted to show you guys how to make a necklace swag. And there it is. If you're wondering about the size of it finished, um, it's about 16 inches to about 20 inches. 16 wide by 20, that particular one. Um, anyhow, you can always expand on it. You can always play with it. Uh, that is just um, a pattern that I came up with just to show you guys. So uh, hopefully you guys can figure out how to expand on it, make it better. Um, and again, unlined or a very thin fabric is going to work the best for you. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Scott Weaver with Designer's Workroom. So here's just a quick footnote about the swag that we're making. You can always make your swag wider. And I'm going to show you how to do that if, if you don't like the width that we came out with. But remember, when I made up my pattern, I drew a center line right here. So you have two options. You can either fold your pattern in half and just use it as a whole, or you can cut your pattern like so. Once you cut it, you can expand your pattern in the width by taking your fabric, folding it in half, like so, and then Depending on how much wider you have to make it, take your half of your pattern. And if you need to make it an inch wider, go a half inch. If you need to make it two inches wider, go an inch from here over, and that'll make it two inches wider. So as farther you go out, the wider your swag becomes. And then you just have to make up that little extra difference right in, right in here. And make sure that you measure evenly using a tape measure making sure on this side if you go on an inch and a half you have it here then from over here and like i say an inch and a half would make three inches wider so just a little footnote and the same way if you need to make it a little narrower um, then you would bring it off the swag like that and then you could make it a little narrower also there's nothing we can do to make it wider with the exception i mean longer with the exception, if you would like to try, you can always uh, use this and then bring it down a little farther and then add an extra pleat or two onto it. Uh, but mostly maybe the width might be a little narrower for you than you wanted to or too wide. And that's the way you're going to adjust the width of the swag. Just want to put that little footnote in there. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content of my videos and i'm hoping that you're going to like and subscribe to my channel it would be muchly appreciated also i put a lot of time and effort into putting this together and i'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind donating a small portion of money to keep this channel going it's of course not necessary but it's always appreciative and also with that if you have any questions regarding um, maybe some drapery stack back or or um, swags whatever your question is I would be happy to help you out with that and uh, to do that all you need to do is just search for Scott Weaver or Scott Weaver videos and you can click on it and there's the subscribe button of course um, and then you click onto my face here and over here you'll see a donate to PayPal. You hit that and it'll bring you to the link and it is safe and secure. There it is right there. You can donate with either a credit card, uh, any credit card or debit card or by PayPal. Um, of course this is not necessary and I'm going to keep giving you the uh, best uh, videos that I possibly can with the limited resources I have. <laughs> But anyhow, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time.